So in front of me, I have two Android handheld gaming devices, and I know what you're thinking. Like, oh, Aaron, this is a Nintendo Switch. That's not an Android handheld gaming device. Well, it pretty much is, <laughs> because it is largely based off of the NVIDIA Shield. Um, so yeah, as you can see, I have this one running on Android, uh, <laughs> and uh, I wanted to talk about something that's not really too relevant anymore, because... Uh, I tried to look up videos on how to improve performance, and a lot of the videos were a couple years old. So, yeah, I bought this little guy right here. Love this. I will, I would definitely be playing this more than this guy. But, anyways, um, and so with the Retroid Pocket Two Plus, there is a special release of Dolphin called Dolphin for Handheld 1.2.1, and Dolphin for Handheld uh, has this very special feature that handheld devices need for Dolphin. Uh, especially the switch because that is not display scale the render resolution the max is one native um, and you can go sub native re and render resolutions which is a very big deal because regular dolphin mmmjr 2.0 the minimum is 1x and that was the problem with a lot of the videos on people playing on the nintendo switch and in fact you can use dolphin mmjr 2.0 um, because you can go into your INI files and you can actually set the um, the re resolution to whatever you want it to because 100 would be 1x so you can set it to 70 and that's 0.7x or 60 that's 0.6x but it's kind of inconvenient um, so I put Dolphin for handheld on my switch um, I'm having to look at this through the phone screen so it's kind of not too ideal. Yeah, so 0.7 is kind of the sweet spot because after that you start, oh and it can run at 16 by 9 with widescreen hex which is pretty neat. Um, yeah, it's more of a CPU bottleneck on this poor guy than a GPU bottleneck because I noticed that even when I went to 16 by 9 it really didn't cut my FPS down and it actually kind of smoothed things out. So it seems like the CPU is kind of um, holding back the, G the NVIDIA GPU. <laughs> um, but uh, Wind Waker's meh on this guy. It's a lot better on the Retroid Pocket. But I'm going to show you guys something that is not meh. And that is the NTSE version. Yes, the NTSV NTSE version, not the PAL version. Because the PAL version would run at uh, 50 FPS. Um, whereas this guy runs at... 45, which is pretty damn good. All right, I'm going to look at this. Oh, how appropriate. Yeah, we'll do Zelda. Because this is the map that I like. Uh, that's kind of laggy. There's a lot of latency there. Maybe it might smooth out in in game. Or I might have to run the resolution, render resolution down. Yeah, we're going to have to turn the render resolution down to 0.6. Point five is too much. There's no reason to go to point five. That's better. Yeah. So yeah, uh, as you can see up in the corner, we're getting you know forty to forty-five FPS, which is pretty good. It's not you know excellent, but it's better than thirty. Which is really impressive. I wish it would give me the option to have frame... Oh, man, that was unlucky. I wish it would have the option to give me, you know, enable frame skipping because even a, you know, uh, one, one frame skip, so 30 FPS, would be really nice. Not even like an every other frame skip for 45 FPS, which is what this is kind of deciding to run at because it's still kind of stuttery. So a 30 FPS frame limiter would be pretty neat. Um, page. There you go. Um, so yeah, this actually there's a there's a, there's a couple of games that run meh, um, and this, the Switch actually doesn't run as well as the Retroid Pocket Two does in these games. But there, a lot of them are definitely playable. Um, so yeah, if you want to give this a shot and put uh, Dolphin for handheld on your Android-based Switch, if you have it, um, I'd give that a go. 
I know you can do Dolphin on Linux on this on this guy. I think back, back to Sarah. I may be wrong, but I don't know if back to Sarah has Dolphin for handheld. So you can always adjust the INI file, but you know that gets kind of annoying after a while. So yeah, I thought this was pretty dope. Uh, if anybody wants, you know, has any questions or wants me to talk about the Retroid Pocket 2, just let me know. Because I, I really do like this little guy. I'll definitely be playing this more than this big dude. But the 16 by 9 screen is pretty cool for some games. Like um, AMR2, which is another Metroid 2 remake, which is a really cool game. But it plays in uh, 4x3 as well. So uh, thanks for watching.